a threat to democracy itself. To make matters yet more complicated and potentially explosive, the film has also turned a spotlight on a centuries-old split within the Muslim community itself. To discuss the complexities, I'm joined by Inaya Falarin Iman, who is GB News Culture and Social Affairs Editor. Hello, Inaya, how are you? Really good, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Good, good. This is a, a, a very fiery topic, I, I, I think we're all aware. I think, first of all, for those not in the know, what is the film about? So the film uh, follows the life of a young Iraqi boy in the present day whose mother was uh, killed by ISIS fighters and he searches for a home and he is taken in by um, a, a grandmother, so to speak, who teaches him about the life of uh, Fatima, who is uh, the Islamic prophet Muhammad's uh, daughter. And it really follows the life and her impact um, on the different people that she touched. And the film essentially argues that she uh, was the first victim of terrorism. And as you said within your introduction, it kind of shines a light on some of those uh, centuries old complexities that divide Shia, which is the minority Minority um, Islamic uh, denomination and and the Sunnis and there's and that's where some of the tension um, starts to come in and what has caused a lot of the controversy. So, given that it's this split between Shia and Sunni, uh, and it's the Sunni who are upset by it, what is it specifically? And clearly, you're using a word and you're suggesting the film suggests terrorism. Uh, uh, mm. Is that the root of the upset? Yeah, so the narrative promoted by the film is uh, one that is promoted by a particular uh, cleric called Yasser al-Habib, and he is controversial in some quarters, but he undoubtedly represents um, a, a section of um, Islamic school of thought. And I think originally when this controversy uh, came about, many people assumed that it was because of the depiction um, of the Prophet. So in a lot of uh, schools of thought within Islam, particularly the Sunni um, section of Islam, many of them see it as blasphemous and unacceptable or haram, as it might be described um, amongst the Muslim community to depict the Prophet. Um, but actually amongst the Shia it is something that is much more complex. So in India, in Iran and some other denominations also in Turkey, they are okay with it. But actually it wasn't necessarily the, the um, depiction of the Prophet Muhammad that caused the controversy. It was the narrative um, of the fact that um, when the Prophet Muhammad died in the seventh century, there was a whole upheaval about who should secede him. And because he never particularly said that this person should follow on as the Caliph, which is the leader of the um, Islamic community. And that is where there is division between Sunnis and Shias about who should have actually um, taken over as the leader of the Islamic community beforehand. And I think it has shed a light on some of those sectarian vision, um, divisions that has caused real world violence in many parts of the Middle East and Muslim majority countries. And we have seen some of those sectarian conflicts play out in the UK as well. And I think one of the things that's been very um, important and telling is that there is no one view amongst the Muslim community. So oftentimes when we have controversies about free speech and blasphemy, we're told, well, actually Muslims find this offensive, but that's not necessarily true. The narrative is promoted by a Shia Muslim. The executive producer is also a Shia Muslim. And and therefore, what is um, argued within a liberal framework is that we should have freedom of speech and tolerance for all so that they can have those debates out in the public square and no one should be censored. Because if you do then censor, then you are effectively endorsing um, a sectarian viewpoint, which is a, a Sunni viewpoint, that no one else should have a different view of Islam, when actually it is clearly a very live and important debate amongst Muslims, even themselves.